the uh, record reflect we have reconvened virtually with all council members present please rise for the pledge of allegiance i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america to the republic which stands one nation under god indivisible liberty and justice for all All right, I got reconnected there. All right, I have a uh, motion for the executive minutes of September 30th and October 14th, 2020. So moved there. They have already been discussed in executive. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, no abstentions, no nays. Welcome all. Feels like uh, fall has really arrived. And uh, just as a reminder that uh, this weekend is time to set back your clock to one hour. Um, on behalf of Madison, I did petition that uh, we not change our clocks because I don't think we want another hour added to the year 2020, but uh, it's not gonna happen. So we will be adding an hour to this uh, very interesting year. Um, but there are some good things happening, um, and we're going to highlight some of those right now. Uh, this past Friday, we gathered on the steps of Hartley Dodge Memorial to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Madison Housing Authority. Madison was the first suburban town in New Jersey to establish a housing authority, and among the first in the country. That is very impressive, the, the forethought that uh, back in 1970. And certainly from our scattered site to our senior housing, we and the Madison Housing Authority have a lot to be proud of. So congratulations to the Housing Authority for 50 years. Also celebrated on Friday was Lou Riccio's retirement. So on December 31st, Lou will leave the office for the final time after arriving in Madison in 1981. As was pointed out, he was probably only planning to stay here five to 10 years and uh, made it a 40 year career. His leadership and vision not only made Madison's affordable housing possible, but made the authority a leading uh, housing authority in the country. We will be wishing Lou well. And speaking of retirement and speaking of Lou's, uh, Lou Cornine, uh, foreman for the uh, Mechanical Service Department of the BPW, is re retiring after 26 years. He'll be uh, we note his retirement on Friday also, and shortly he'll be heading off to Florida with a uh, fishing pole in hand to enjoy uh, his next phase of life. And as I mentioned um, at our last meeting, our Tri-Town Cares, our group that have been working on uh, mental health issues throughout uh, the pandemic and other stresses is sponsoring a week of kindness and gratitude that uh, started today and goes through uh, November 1st. And this is with, under the premise that helping others and sharing gratitude is a great tool to help us get through stressful times. So today was a gratitude day, a day to thank others, such as teachers, which will be appropriate for something coming up in just a few minutes. Please, firefighters, a friend. So if you haven't uh, had a chance to show gratitude, you know, after this meeting, shoot off, shoot off an email or make a phone call to say thank you. Uh, tomorrow, for example, is be a neighbor day. And so go ahead and say hello to a neighbor, even a, a stranger, or, you know, to help someone in need, such as raking leaves for a senior. And if you go to our tritowncares.org or Tritown Cares Facebook page, you'll find um, more information um, on this, including uh, things to do on each of the remaining days of this uh, week. And a reminder that Halloween is on in Madison, unless we are directed by the state otherwise. Of course, there will not be a downtown parade and no trunk or treat, but you can go out. But if you do trick-or-treating, please remember the following. A uh, Halloween mask is not a medical mask, so wear your mask under your scary mask and keep the uh, mask on so you don't touch your face after getting candy. Stay in your own neighborhood if possible, and of course, if that's not possible, 
stay in go to a neighborhood with friends or uh, nearby. Do not trick or treat in other towns. Um, and go out with your family or regular friends. And when you do get back home, uh, keep that candy around for at least overnight before you touch it and wash your hands. I know that's going to be a challenge, but we can do it. Uh, and on Friday, this past Friday, October 16th, we had our affordable housing settlement um, fairness hearing with Judge Gauss. And the, while the hearing was continued, it was a very positive session. We should be wrapping up in December. We will have a town hall meeting and please mark your calendars. This will be via Zoom on Wednesday, November 18th at 7 p.m. The details will be posted on our website and through social media. The uh, meeting will cover the plan for Madison's uh, meeting our obligations, including the concept and site for the 40 unit, 100% affordable housing. And uh, before I get to this next section, which we're going to be calling up some of our guests, I just had a, a hot uh, news flash, a happy anniversary to Carmela and Sal Vitali, who are celebrating the uh, anniversary today. Not a better way to celebrate anniversary than in Zoom. 57 so, years. Do you believe that yep. one? I was a child bride. 57 years. So. I was a child bride. Yep. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We'll give our best to Sal, too, and uh, make sure you get a chance to celebrate. So I'd like to bring in um, our representatives from uh, Board of Ed to talk a little bit about the uh, National Merit uh, semifinalists and uh, commended students. And we'll explain it, and then we'll uh, recognize our students, that many of whom are on board here. Do we have Mark coming up? There's Alex, one of our... Uh, Recipients there is our superintendent. Got a few more that we'll be adding on here. Well, while we're waiting for everyone, I just want to say good evening. Thank you, Mayor Conley, and thank you, members of the Borough Council. It's great to have, thank you so much for honoring our students tonight. It's great to be here with all of you. I hope that you're all healthy and well. Give me one second. the world we live in. But uh, it's great to be with you all here tonight. Thank you so much for taking the time and uh, thank you for our students who were able to attend and, uh, and thank you and congratulations to all of our students as well. With me tonight is Dan Ross. He is our assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction and personnel and he's going to share a few things about the National Merit Scholarship Program and the National Merit Scholar Program and a little bit of information about uh, the students who are being honored. Thanks, Mark. And uh, <clears throat> to uh, council members, thank you so much for having us. It's really uh, wonderful to have the ability to speak with you tonight. Um, the National Merit uh, Scholar Program is, uh, and, and my apologies for, for my, uh, my camera, but uh, the National Merit Scholars Program is a program based on uh, the PSAT and MSQT assessment, which is taken by 11th graders across the country. And uh, the National Merit uh, Scholars Recognition has uh, a couple of components to it. And uh, basically students uh, are, are compared their scores uh, against students across the country. And there are certain criteria that are met um, that allow students to participate in the program that results in um, potential for scholarship uh, funding, as well as just national recognition. Um, and so we're very proud to have our students um, who are with us tonight uh, be honored here and be recognized for their incredible work. Um, we really owe a debt of gratitude to the incredible work um, at Madison High School that has gone into preparing and um, supporting these students throughout uh, their time at the high school. And obviously, um, as students have, have sort of journeyed through the K-12 experience um, in Madison Public Schools, um, and uh, I see that Ms. Reddy is here as well, um, and obviously want to give a, a huge thank you to the Madison Board of Education, who's been very supportive for all the endeavors that we have um, in place. And so uh, I actually don't have the list of students who are being recognized, um, but uh, Mayor Conley I, and uh, members of the council, it really is just wonderful that um, we can have this partnership 
uh, where the students of the district can be recognized in uh, you know, such a, an esteemed forum uh, such as this. And uh, we're really just very grateful for, uh, for the opportunity to, to bring them forward um, for this recognition. Thank you, Dan. And uh, I, I do have the names uh, before I uh, get to them. Um, uh, Board of Education President Heather Reddy, would you like to say a few words? Of course, thank you very much. I just um, would like to echo um, Mr. Ross's comments about the um, the pride that we take in our high school students. And also, you know, for many of these students, it's the culmination of their work over the last um, 13 years in the district. And so um, having these recognitions um, tonight from the borough is um, very meaningful for us. So thank you very much for taking the time and thank you to all of our students for, for your hard work and for representing Madison so well on a national level. So thank you to everyone for this tonight. Thank you. Um, and most of our uh, students are on board here and um, with their being bashful with their video off, so we may not see them, but I want to first recognize the uh, semifinalists, which uh, again represents less than 1% of US high school seniors, including the highest scoring entrance in, in each state. And um, our semifinalists from Madison High School, Lady Hoberman, Henry Maranovich, and Adam Chair. Oh, there. There's it. Got a few of them right there. And uh, we'll uh, give you all recognition as I, uh, I want to you know, share our, um, in, in addition to the three semifinalists, the 17 Madison High School seniors that were commended students in uh, 2021. And these represent the top 3% of participants across the country. So truly a commendable and uh, representative of the hard work and um, that you have put in. And this is uh, Ann Bolt, Daniel Boyer, S. Callahan, Jonathan Cho, Thomas Daly, Sophia Danso, Ed Downing, William Hagerstrom, Patrick Hanley, Madeline Huang, Alex Johnson, Ross Matos, Aiden Niceberg, Emily Ruina, Michael Shire, Cecilia Smith, and Alex Tauber. And I'll apologize if I didn't capture all those names properly. So let's give everyone a good round of applause for your job well done. Good job. Good job. And uh, we wish you, that, again, not only congratulations on doing this, but uh, best of luck going forward, wherever um, you have, uh, we, college will, will take you. Um, you have done Madison proud and we will we know that you will do Madison proud in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Conley. Okay. Yep, Thank welcome. you, council members. Thanks. All right, we're gonna, Move on to reports from uh, committees. And um, while we're doing that, I'm gonna apologize because the heat has been turned on this building. So I'm gonna take, take the opportunity to take off my jacket um, before I melt in my seat. But uh, we'll start off with uh, <laughs> Finance and Borough Clerk, Council President Vitali. Okay, thank you, Mayor. From administration, uh, late last week, administration in the Finance Department submitted Madison's best practices checklist to the state of New Jersey. Uh, we talked about this document at our last council meeting and uh, were given the results. The checklist was established to in encourage municipalities to improve internal controls, address statutory and regulatory compliance and to highlight areas critical to sound municipal finance and operations. Madison scored 96%. So that's it. So we got an A. And as such, we will receive 100% of our start state aid. And the checklist, uh, if you're interested in seeing it, the checklist can be found on the financial document section on rosenet.org. 
Uh, about two weeks ago, we got some good news from Trenton when the governor announced that Madison will get up to $198,036 in Federal CARES Act coronavirus relief funds. The borough has spent a significant amount of money on local relief programs, personal protective equipment, medical supplies, overtime for the health department nurse, staffing to monitor residents as they enter Barrow Hall, protective shields, and cleaning supplies. These funds will help defray those costs. Administration and the finance department are working on the documentation and hope to submit it to the state later this week. Administration has also finished all the internal budget meetings with the department heads. Our chief financial officer, Jim Burnett, has been working with Sandy Emmerich, our personnel director on the budgeting, um, the various salary lines in the budget. Personnel related costs make up almost 50% of the total operating budget for the borough. Over the next two months, Ray and Jim will be working on the rest of the budget. They're also working with, the, with Bob Vogel our engineer on the uh, five-year capital uh, plan. We expect to have that presentation of that document on December 14th uh, council meeting. I'd like to encourage everyone to uh, get involved in the budget. Listen to these budget meetings. Um, the first one will be uh, the, you know, the capital budget, but ongoing, there will be um, a, a series of budget meetings and introduction to each one of the departments. Um, I've said it once and I'll say it again, this is probably the most important thing that this mayor and council does is to work on the budget. Um, so from the, uh, the tax collector, the deadline for the senior freeze property tax reimbursement program has been extended to December 31st. Residents who were 65 years or older on December 31st, 2018, and whose total annual income in 2018 and 2019 was roughly $90,000 or less, may qualify and are encouraged to pick up the application book in the tax office. Um, people get discouraged with that, uh, that tax, uh, that application booklet, but um, if you seem to be having any problems, uh, it's a worthwhile endeavor. Um, I'm sure somebody in the borough can uh, possibly help you. Uh, the annual tax sale will be held on December 9th for the 2019 taxes or utility charges that are still unpaid. The official tax sale notices were mailed out on October 20th and the list of parcels would be pu published in the Madison Eagle starting on November the 12th. One final reminder, board tax, court Fourth quarter taxes are due on November the 1st. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And now on to uh, public safety, Ms. Kelly. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the fire department, it is uh, fall and it is the leaf season. So please be careful when you park your cars. Um, uh, do not park them on the pile of leaves in, that are sitting in the roadway. Um, and make sure that you keep fire hydrants um, clear and um, keep your car away from the fire hydrants also. And if you have a wood burning fireplace or stove that you use in your home, have the chimney cleaned and inspected annually and only uh, burn seasoned hard wood. That is from the fire department. That's all I've got tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And now on to public works and engineering, Ms. Byrne. charge the air conditioning system on the fire engine one and repair the Waverly clock. So the Waverly clock is now telling time again. Uh, the um, uh, engineering Beverly Road and Albright Circle are completed with paving. I can tell you from personal experience, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, the AB contracting has progressed on installation of the metal doors and standing seam metal roofing on the Dodge Field Playground. The contractor has indicated that another two weeks will be required on site, weather permitting, but that's uh, coming along very well. The Environmental Commission had a meeting with environmental groups in the Chathams to discuss ways we can work together to address climate change. And then finally, we had two really awesome Eagle Scout projects uh, completed in the last couple of weeks. The first was Key and Dean 
He built a solar panel charging station at the Madison Public Library. So you can go and charge your, your, um, your laptop or your iPad or your phone outside of the public library. And then David Amieva built benches and a picnic bench and a fire pit at the community garden. Uh, it's really lovely. Uh, so go down and check them out. Those boys are from uh, Medicine Troop 25. So that's my report. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you and community affairs, Mr. Hoover. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, from the Downtown Development Commission, you've got four weeks left to go to the farmer's market on Thursdays. It ends November 19th. It's very exciting. We've got great vendors this year. It's from two o'clock in the afternoon until seven. Uh, from the Chamber of Commerce, if you haven't noticed, the scarecrows are out on Waverly Place and will remain up through November 5th. The holiday window painting will be completed by November 25th. Find Rosie, the Rose City Reindeer event will begin Saturday, November 28th. That's always an exciting program for adults and children of all ages. In the Madison Community Arts Center, the new entertainment series, Fall Back into the Arts, continues to grow and is well attended. The remaining entertainment includes children's interactive theater of the Wizard of Oz, local high school and college voices, and newly added Broadway, Broadway Cabaret with professional singers on October 30th and classical rock band under the Thorns on November 6th. At the November 6th concert, Have a Good Day Cafe will provide complimentary hot chocolate throughout the evening. Plans are continuing for a virtual holiday arts festival recorded at the Arts Center to broadcast in, to be broadcast in late November and December. Uh, from the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts, the ongoing restoration preservation project for the James Library building has now moved to the interior. With funding from the Morris County Historic Preservation Trust and Madison's Open Space Funds, METC management is proceeding with the selection of bidders for the project. It is, it is anticipated this multi-year phase will con commence in early January. The museum remains open by reservation and everyone is encouraged to please call and make a reservation and go visit the library. I mean, the, the museum, excuse me. The museum's annual benefit will take place virtually this year. 2020 Vision, it's called, will be an evening to celebrate many of the schools and students from around the state who have participated in, in the museum's educational programs and virtual field trips. A few special guests will participate, including a special surprise Broadway star making an appearance. All proceeds directly benefit the museum's education programming. Thank you, Mayor, that's all I have. Thank you, and health is Cohen. The health department has already conducted several flu clinics serving Madison, Chatham Township, and Springfield. Our last scheduled clinic is tomorrow, October 27th in Madison. At this time, all available appointments for that clinic are filled. However, the health department is looking at additional clinic dates pending the availability of additional vaccine. Updates will be available via Borough Social, Borough Social Media and on rosenet.org. If you haven't gotten your flu shot yet, and especially if your insurance allows you to receive a free flu vaccine from your doctor or pharmacy, get your flu shot in the coming weeks, sooner rather than later. For a few COVID-related updates, as of today, Madison reports 210 total cases of COVID-19. That is 18 new cases since our last meeting. 15 cases remain open and are still being monitored by the health department. The Madison Health Department continues to work closely with the school district, providing support through consultation, guidance, and public health investigations. As our numbers indicate, Madison is not immune to the uptick in cases, even throughout our state, seen throughout our state and in our country. So we must remain vigilant even when interacting with our friends and extended, extended family outside our immediate household. The list of states and U.S. territories included in New Jersey's travel advisory has increased to 39. However, given the current case rate in New Jersey, current guidance is limit interstate travel to and from New Jersey as much as possible. If you don't need to travel out of state, simply stay home. As Mayor Conley said, with Halloween this weekend, guidance uh, that he reviewed is on rosenet.org. Remember, the choices we make can have a major impact on the lives of our friends and neighbors. They can also impede our community's ability to operate schools, recreation programs, and stay Madison strong. 
Continue to wash your hands, use face coverings, practice social distancing, and stay home and get tested if you don't feel well. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And utilities, Ms. Ehrlich. Thank you, Mayor. From the electric department, the tree trimming crews have completed line clearance on Park Lane and Delwood Park and are now starting on another section of Woodland Road. The department set a new pole and anchor at 55 Fairview Ave for a new home with underground service and the layout for new poles, transformers, and wire upgrades on Rosewood Drive, Crestwood Drive, and Linwood Place is in progress. Plans and layout are also in progress to install 5,000 feet of fiber optic telecommunications wire to be installed between the Kings Road substation and the James Park substation. Both electric crews assisted American Electrical Testing Company at the Kings Road substation recently to complete testing on equipment there. The department is researching upgrading the commercial district LED, uh, light poles to LED lamps or installing retrofit kits on the lamp posts. And finally, the electric department energized the new electric vehicle charging station in the library parking lot. It's a good complement to the new charging station installed by our Eagle Scout. From the water department, the Madison Water Department's annual fire hydrant and water main flushing program has been completed. All hydrants have been operated, tested, and flushed. And with the information collected during this process, hydrant repair or replacement can now begin. An outside contractor, Liquid Engineering, has performed an internal inspection of the Madison Avenue and Midwood Terrace water storage tanks. Both tanks are in good condition with only minor corrosion on the inside and outside and minor repairs needed to the vent cap of the Madison Avenue Tower. The upcoming report will determine when we will need to schedule painting for both of those tanks. And finally, with the cold weather approaching, the department would again like to remind customers to have their irrigation systems winterized and to remove all hoses from your outside faucets. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any communications or petitions? Uh, yes, Mayor and Council received three emails. Uh, first one was October the 15th from John um, Henehan of Kensington Road regarding a police 911 response at a neighbor's home. Another email on October the 19th from Thomas Markanowitz uh, of Farm Park regarding the protective shields recently approved for purchase for the police department. And an email dated October the 26th from resident Pat Rowe, Pine Avenue, who raised concern regarding spending uh, funds. Um, he raised concern to consider not spending funds on, on anything that's not critical to the operation of the borough. Yeah, a little hey, thank you. And now we're on to our first of uh, two invitations for discussion. Uh, this one is always is, is limited. So I'm, I'll be opening this up to opportunity to ask questions or make comments on any discussion item that is on our discussion agenda or the resolutions. Uh, there will be another invitation for discussion later in the meeting for on any subject. And if the way this will work. If you are online, you raise your hand by clicking the hand. And if you're on the phone, you can be recognized by hitting star nine. But note for security reasons, we cannot recognize anyone listed as anonymous or a call without a phone number identified. When you are recognized and unmuted, you must first state your name and address before starting any comments. Failure to do so may result in you being muted or disconnected. And please state the agenda item and or the resolution you're commenting on. Try to keep your comments to three minutes or less, uh, but we do give you a one minute grace period and you'll be stopped at four minutes. And so as not to take time from your, uh, your comments, uh, we'll capture your questions and either answer it after, when you're done or during the agenda discussion item. Um, and these are the items you may comment on. And again, if you want to comment on other things, you have to wait until our next uh, comment period coming a little bit later in the meeting. But you may comment on the YMTA presentation. YMTA is one of our partner organizations uh, related to uh, Team Center and also uh, Project CUNY Pride. And you may also comment on the following uh, resolutions that are part of the consent agenda. So when we get to the consent agenda, you also know that they're they're included here. Resolution 258 is appointing Christopher McDougall to the position of mechanical foreman uh, of our mechanical service department of public works, as I mentioned before, Lou Cornine's retirement. Resolution 259, awarding the contract to absolute fire protection for the purchase of uh, a pupper and uh, 
This is um, not to exceed eight hundred twenty thousand dollars, but nine hundred seventy-nine, um, and should be noted that uh, it's the hard work of our fire chief and others that we were able to uh, take quite a bit off of the cost of that um, item. Resolution two hundred sixty has been retired. Um, and was withdrawn. Resolution 261 is authorizing the use of spaces in the public parking lot at the Civic Center for the Thursday Morning Club on November 13th and 14th for the Bazaar Noel. Resolution 262 is approving a raffle license for the Rotary uh, Club, Madison Rotary Club. Actually, it's uh, the District 7475 doing a monthly raffle next year. Resolution 263, approving temporary signs for five days of action sponsored by the Madison Area YMCA. Resolution 264 is rescinding Resolution 252 and authorizing contracts to Rio supply under the Morris County Co-op uh, for uh, water meters and da data recorders. And, and this is uh, in excess of the 17,500 um, normal uh, limit, but it's under the uh, co-op agreement. Resolution 265 is authorizing use of competitive contracting for gateway and wayfinding signage systems. And this is uh, added in there, 85,000. Uh, resolution 266 is permitting continued use of public streets and parking areas for outdoor dining uh, it was supposed to end November 1st. We're now extending it through February 28th, 2021. So um, uh, during, during this crisis, people can still dine outdoors. Resolution 267 is uh, amending the professional services contract for well A and B design additions to McDonald Incorporated. And this is not to exceed $32,000. Resolution 268 is amending resolution uh, 249 that authorized the use of community pool parking lot by Morris Elite Soccer Club for a equipment swap. This is now uh, scheduled for November 14th and 15th. Resolution 269 is authorizing use of $30,800 of open space money for design guidelines for historic preservation commission. This will help assist uh, those who own historic properties. Resolution 270 is supporting a grant application by the Morris County Parks Commission to complete the traction line for the pedestrian walkway and bike trail. This is the extension of the traction line that now um, terminates at uh, Danforth and would be extended to um, uh, Elm Street if, if they are able to get the grant. So this is just supporting the grant. Uh, and Resolution 271, appointing uh, Caridad Reyes to the full-time position of Deputy Borough Clerk. And Resolution 272 is authorizing the adoption of the 2020 Morris County Hazard Mitigation Plan. So you may comment on those resolutions or the YMC agenda item. Anyone wishing to comment, please raise your hand now. Being none. I close this part of the meeting. Oh, I do have a hand up. Well, uh, we will bring uh, Joe up. Again, state your name, address, and the agenda item that you're commenting on, agenda item or the um, uh, resolution. Joe? Um, yeah, this is Joe Valdirchak, 5 BJ Avenue, Madison, um, on resolution 270. Yes. Okay, um, the borough council may remember that in 2012, residents of Beach Avenue and the Okinawa neighborhood opposed the extension of the traction line behind Beach Avenue and behind Crestwood Drive from Danforth Road to Elm Street. And the, there were multiple reasons for this. And that was because of removing a lot of the uh, greenery and trees, the expense, and because of uh, water issues, storm, uh, storm sewer issues. So I'm surprised to see this up again. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just a little background, uh, Joe was correct. It was um, when the county was back here uh, several years ago. At that time, the council uh, did not show support um, 
This is only for the actual grant. One of the things that I think this council and a future council would be committed to is to make sure that if it goes forward that um, we work together with the county to mitigate um, any impact on the neighborhood, such as making sure it's designed to preserve as much as screening as possible. Uh, the, the county does own the property of the traction line that goes between uh, Danforth and um, Elm Street. And um, we uh, know there may have been some encroachments also onto that property by the residents. And so the county would, we would work with the county to make sure that things are moved back to where they need to be and proper fencing and um, the like is put in there. So uh, um, we uh, certainly have heard from the uh, neighbors and whatever we do would be a commitment to uh, minimize impact to the neighborhood and also kind of work with the greater good of uh, providing this connection uh, from the traction line to what really becomes um, you know, downtown Madison as it's much easier on a bicycle to go from uh, Elm Street to uh, downtown than it is if you uh, come down uh, Danforth or one of the other neighborhoods. So um, we will be working together. Um, this is just the, uh, the grant application and we'll let you the, certainly be notified in the neighborhood if the uh, county is successful. Anyone else wishing to comment on any of the agenda items? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting and we move on to our agenda discussions. I'll uh, ask uh, Deb Cohen, who is a liaison to health, is also the uh, liaison to the uh, YMCA, is one of our partner organizations. Uh, so Diane Mann is here on behalf of the YMCA to discuss um, the teen center. She came last year um, and they requested $12,000 to help keep the teen center going. Obviously COVID had a huge impact on what they could do. So in talking with her over the past few weeks, it was decided we should do an update with what they've been doing briefly, but more importantly, how with the continuation of COVID and indoor restrictions, how they're going to um, continue to provide for the teens of teens and youth of Madison. Great, um, thank you, Council Member uh, Cohen. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I'm Diane Mann. I live at number one Noe Avenue in Madison. I'm the CEO of the YMCA. And as you know, we have buildings at 111 Kings Road and at 54 East Street, both in Madison. Um, Council Member Cohen had reached out earlier this month and I was glad that she did uh, to have an opportunity to tell you how we are operating our teen programs but I also wanted to take the opportunity to say a public uh, and very heartfelt thank you to the borough leadership for its support to all businesses in Madison over the last six months, but especially on, in my case, to the Madison Area YMCA. Um, as I wrote in my letter to the council, um, we learned in May that our site for summer camp wasn't gonna be available to us at the Drew University campus. Um, the, the university had determined that they needed to close all of the grounds, including the indoor buildings. So we were th without a site. Um, as you know, the Kirby Children's Center is at 54 East Street, right across from the Lucy D. Anthony uh, sports field. And so we reached out to the borough. Um, we knew that we could have weather shelter and restrooms at the Kirby Center, and we could host camp theoretically at the Lucy D. Anthony field. And the borough could not have been more cooperative and helpful in making that happen uh, on a shared arrangement. So we could share that with the other sports uh, and recreation team users for the summer. Um, we were able to host 40, uh, 20, 59 individual campers um, and they were all divided into pods of no more than 10 campers with dedicated staff. And they didn't move across those individual groups for the duration of camp. Um, so the site worked out beautifully. And the point of that is that the working families who needed care for their school age kids during the summer were able to have it thanks to the borough. So we are sincerely grateful. Um, and then uh, Mayor Connolly can attest as can Michael Fitzpatrick. Um, I've reached out many times for advice on and help in interpreting the state guidelines for public health, how the Y Family Center on Kings Road could reopen and assure that we were compliant and meeting all the state uh, standards for safety for checks at the front door, temperatures, interviews, distancing, mask wearing, et cetera. And on countless occasions, the mayor and Michael Fitzpatrick have been responsive 
and even willing to come and look at our facility and our layout and give us advice. Uh, so a public and very heartfelt thank you to the borough for its support. I know that you've been doing this for any number of businesses in town. We're all facing enormous challenge as our revenue has been hit very, very hard. So thank you for all of your, all of your effort and your energy. Uh, the other reason I'm here tonight in response to uh, Council Member Cohen's request is to talk about the status of our teen programs. And as you saw in the report I sent, we started the year with some pretty good numbers. We had dozens of uh, teens coming in, preteens and teens, coming into the Family Center to visit the Teen Center in our various programs in January and February. We had to close the Family Center on March 16th, and that's where you saw that the numbers really drop. Um, at that time, we really needed to move to an online format, and that's where we really didn't have the kind of success that we had had up into that time. You'll remember in March and April, schools were trying to convert to more online uh, and distance learning. Uh, most of us who were employed during the day were, were trying to figure out how to move our, our uh, permanent offices home. Uh, we were competing against all of that to try to stay in touch with our teens. So our online program offerings were not that well attended. We had just five uh, teen leaders participating in the spring. Uh, we had a cohort in youth and government of only six students. They are continuing and I'll say more about that in a minute. And then we tried to do teen scene online. Uh, we offered four evenings of what, what's normally our live Friday night teen scene. And we had just a handful, five or six uh, participants for the online. Um, so spring was not a great success for us. The youth and government cohort has continued to be together. Um, as you recall from earlier reports, um, this is a model legislature. Uh, the students had started to draft their legislation in January and February, and we gave them the option to continue the whole thing online for the rest of the semester, and they opted to hold off. They really wanted to wait to see if there would be an opportunity later in the year for them to come together with their peers, uh, with their families, with the community to present their legislation live and do, do a debate um, as the program is modeled to do. We're still hopeful that that might happen, but, it, but we haven't gotten there just yet. Um, so as I said, we were able to do summer camp with thanks to the borough. Um, out of that summer camp group, we had 12 older teens who were able to go through our leadership in training program, leaders in training program. That allows them a two week job training supervision workshop um, that then allows them to participate in backing up the staff during summer camp. They help to supervise uh, the students, uh, do behavior uh, modification and so forth. And this year, uh, they got the special additional skill of knowing how to reinforce the distancing standards and to back us up as we were doing daily health checks at camp. Uh, so we felt that was worthwhile. Um, Council Member Cohen had asked me to look forward. What are we going to do in 2021 and how are we going to navigate? Um, the first and most important thing we're looking forward to doing is continuing to be compliant with the state health standards. The Y has, has always aspired to be a wellness organization and we need to make sure that we're modeling all of the health standards in all of our buildings and all of our programs. So compliance will continue to be number one. Next month, we'd like to try two things, some limited in-building face-to-face teen programs to the extent that our building can accommodate. Normally we would locate our teen center for that, but if you've seen it, it's the size of a racquetball court. It means that not too many teens could be there in a safe distance, even with masks on. So we'll be looking for space throughout the Family Center um, at the appropriate time, afternoon, after schools and evenings when we could have teens actually in the building. We'd like to next month recruit and launch a new cohort of teen leaders um, that would go through a five month program, no fee, um, that would continue until May. Um, this would ideally be a mix of face-to-face -face and online. Um, we're going to continue to see how we adapt, watching the trends of uh, the uh, transmission rate and what the uh, health standards allow us to do. As we enter the flu season, we all know we're, we're more or less on guard if we're going to have to step back any of this. So we'll be ready to adapt, uh, but we would like to do those two things next month, some in building and a new teen leaders uh, cohort. Then in December, we would like to resume something we were doing face-to-face -face in the first two months of the year, 
and that is tutoring with students who come from families where Spanish is their first language. That may well adapt itself to a full online uh, uh, program. We'd like to try that starting in December and see if that can work. We believe that it probably can. Um, and then going forward into 2021, I think it will be an exercise in innovation uh, and being opportunistic to adapt rapidly to what the health standards allow us to do. We'll continue to work in partnership with the junior school. Our contact there, Brooke Phillips, the assistant principal, has been a strong partner in letting us know what's going on in the teen population and helping us get word out to the students. Um, Council Member Cohen has also encouraged me to deepen our relationship with uh, Dave Drexel at the high school so we can raise awareness among the high school students about their opportunity for volunteerism and earning volunteer hours for honor students um, in the coming year. We'd love to do all those things together. Um, funding, uh, let me say a few things about that because I do know that the, that the uh, challenge you're facing on the municipal budget is very significant this year. Most of us who are running businesses, those of you who run government, know that we have taken a huge economic hit. Uh, my sympathies are completely with you. I understand you've got a million and a half of a revenue shortfall to try to make up somehow in the budget. I appreciate that and understand it. Um, we also have a significant budget shortfall uh, in revenue this year at the Y. Um, normally, the teen programs uh, at the Y are, uh, are um, paid for, if you will, by operating revenue that comes to us through our membership. This year, our membership revenue is cut by about 50%. Uh, we're down significantly in that revenue. Uh, and like other businesses, we've trimmed as much as we can this year. We've tried to be strategic and not do it with a, with a blunt instrument. And one of the things that that has required is looking very carefully at the people we could not easily replace. Those people include our teen program staff members who are trained specifically to work with adolescents, uh, preteens, to understand their social emotional development and what they specifically need. So as we have trimmed back our staff, we've worked very hard to keep our teen staff intact. It's a full-time person and a variety of part-time uh, staff members. So the funding that has come from the borough has directly helped us to pay for their salaries in the past and that's going to be more important than ever in 2021 and beyond. Um, so let me just say how grateful we are for your support and your consideration. I know as you go into the budget hearings, it's going to be very difficult. And I would just hope that you would keep us in mind for this funding as we try to recover in 2021. Um, I'll stop and see if there are questions. Great. Questions and comments from the council, uh, Deb? Thanks, Diane. I appreciate it. And I'm um, glad to hear that you guys have wheels turning um, and even possibly getting the teens in for a little bit of face-to-face -face, um, tutoring. Just a couple of questions, one of which I brought up last year and mentioned to you on the phone as well. I, I'm still looking for that PR piece from the Y for students to get involved that so that they know what's going on. Um, I, I just, I feel that's still a weak point. Um, and the ELL tutoring, I guess the two questions I have, and I realize it would take some time to get it up. So this may be why and with the holidays and teacher convention, if you could get it up sooner than December, I think that'd be great. Um, again, how will students find out about it, both those that are able to tutor and those that need tutoring. Um, and I, I strongly encourage you, like I said on the phone about the elementary school connection, those parents are in desperate need um, for some in-person if it can be pulled off, but definitely some virtual um, connections with students that on one hand could be tutoring, but also could be, um, uh, you know, other entertainment things that could be group Zooms, you know, the screen time becomes the problem with the, the Zooms and I get that. so. That might be um, a little difficult. And then something that has come to our attention since we've talked is that the borough may not be able to use the school gymnasiums for the winter rec programs as they have in the past for basketball um, and uh, that sort of thing due to the pandemic. And you know, since the programs didn't run this year, 
Um, it'd be great if we could set up a partnership where the borough can use those for the rec programs, either at the Kirby Center and or the Family Center, obviously working out schedules, depending on what you guys all have planned um, so that we can continue to offer these um, important programs, which are at least keeping the kids active for as long as indoor sports are able to happen, if they're able to happen, um, you know, this winter. Um, so those are those are my questions, which again, Sarah, mostly um, the, the PR and also making sure you get the elementary school tutoring thought of. And just a heads up, Brooke Phillips is now the acting principal of the Madison Junior School. She's no longer vice principal. Um, she's in terrific. transition. <laughs> terrific, terrific. That's great. Thank you. Um, with regard to the um, limited use of the school gymnasiums, can you say more about that? I assume that means um, the density would be too high. Is that the issue? I believe um, from the little bit I know, and unfortunately all of our school representatives have left, but if my district's any indication, they don't want anything happening in the schools that is not directly related to the school. So they're not, we're not letting anybody, any outside groups. And even though the rec department is not an outside group, it's not run by the school. So they don't want to, the responsibility of it, is it being cleaned? Is it being sanitized? Because they are bringing kids into the building. So it seems to be pretty standard practice with the schools that anything extra, they're giving up that revenue, um, although they had to deal with the borough um, about that anyway. But it doesn't matter what the programs are. They're just not letting anybody into the buildings. Understood. That's good to know. Thank you for sharing that with me. Um, a couple things with regard to the PR and getting the word out. Um, Deb, you might have noticed your your incoming uh, your feed today. We've added you as a member of uh, the Madison YMCA, so you'll get all of our newsletters, our social media, et cetera, et cetera. I would be happy to put all members of the council um, on that, so you can see what goes out. Um, we will be working increasingly directly with the school leadership to use them to help get word out. Uh, for example, as you know, as we mentioned, the, the scholarship, the Honor Society students, their opportunity to do volunteer work with the Y. Um, so we'll be trying to take leadership um, and guidance from the schools uh, to get the word out more directly to the students. We've done that, I think, fairly effectively in the elementary and middle schools, directly bringing kids over. But if you can't see it, that means we're not quite there. So we'll continue to work on that. Um, we are trying to elevate our presence um, on social media without being overbearing. Um, as a YMCA, we want to be a support rather than the center of the, of the dialogue on social media, but we will look at ways we can do that more fully. So point well taken. And I would just say, and then I'll be quiet and let others speak, is with the social media, I think right now parents, um, and I'm going to put Councilwoman Ehrlich on the spot with younger children, um, and I know she's in a different situation, but are looking for anything. And social media is where a lot of the parents are. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where they're getting their information. So while under normal circumstances, you might be right about trying to monitor that. I think right now, any programs you have that you can push out, um, there's Madison area family and events, there's the Madison area parents group, there's Madison small businesses. We're all monitoring them to see what's out there and what can we get our kids to do that is not sitting in front of a screen, or if it's sitting in front of a screen, it's sitting in front of a screen, engaging with, you know, kids their own age in different ways that are not academic. Okay. Any, any other questions or comments for Diane and the YMTA? All right. Well, thank you for uh, carving out time to bring us up to date. Uh, as we've said many times, the Y is a great partner in the community and. Uh, especially at times like this, it, um, it helps Madison get through very difficult uh, threats here. So thank you for everything. Thank you. And uh, please uh, pass our best and on to the staff for all they're doing. Thank you, I will. All right, we uh, now move on to ordinance for hearing. Will the clerk please read the statement? The ordinance is scheduled for hearing were introduced by title and passed on the first reading at a regular meeting of the council held on Wednesday, September the 30th, 2020, were posted and filed according to law and copies were made available to the general public requesting same. And just a reminder, our last meeting was also Wednesday. So those that uh, were introduced at that point will be uh, have a hearing in our next meeting. I call up ordinances for second reading and 
ask the clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 34-2020. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending chapter 59, section 59-15 of the Borough Code entitled fees regarding dog and cat licenses to increase fees. Mayor, I move ordinance. Or, actually, I'm sorry, we're, we're missing our... Uh, yeah, we're missing, we're the, missing uh, our yeah. statement, so I, I, I open the hearing. Is there anyone in the public wishing to comment on that uh, ordinance? Please raise your hand. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Now you can. <laughs> Mayor, I move ordinance 34 2020. A second. Any further council discussion? Mayor, I just want to remind people that this ordinance does do a slight increase, but also allows you to get multi year licenses so that you can get it every three years in conjunction with your rabies shot for your pet rather than having to renew yearly. And there is a slight discount for that. Thank you for, thank you for that. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. I declare ordinance 34-2020 adopted and, and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice there in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 35-2020. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating up to $150,000 from the Affordable Housing Fund for the construction of a two-family house at 7 Elm Street, Madison by HQM Properties. I open the hearing to the public. Anyone wish to comment, please raise your hand now. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Uh, Mayor, I move ordinance 35-2020. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote, please. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Oh, Mr. Hoover, my apologies. Mr. Hoover? All right, yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. And Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. I declare ordinance 35-2020 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice there in the newspaper and file the ordinance according to the law. Ordinance 36-2020. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $85,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase and installation of borough-wide wayfinding signs and gateway signage. I open the hearing for ordinance 36-2020 and I would wish to comment on the public. Please raise your hand now. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Uh, Mayor, I move ordinance 36-2020. Second. Any council discussion? Ms. Ostry. Yes, um, Mayor, I just wanted to say that we, we had um, an email regarding um, ordinance 36-2020 tonight. And um, this I feel is an important step for our downtown businesses. They've been hit so hard with COVID that um, this is just one step to help our town recover. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John, you had your hands up and then Carmel? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Uh, this has been recommended by Urbanomics back in 2017. And we at the DDC have been working on it since 2019. I think this is one of the most important spends we can make this year for all the reasons that Ostry said, plus attracting people to downtown. We've got to improve the way we look. And I think by doing wayfinding signs, uh, it's gonna really help a lot. So I'm all for it. Thank you. And Carmela? Yeah, I, I just wanna make a point that, um, you know, uh, we, we were named the uh, best town to live in in the state of New Jersey. And these are some of the reasons that uh, we're named that. Uh, it's important. Um, to make sure that we continue to help our businesses. And um, I, I think that, you know, thank, uh, thanking the uh, Downtown Development Commission and uh, Lisa Ellis for bringing this forward. It's something that we have to continually move. Um, I, I know the, uh, you know, the statement was made that we, we might have a budget problem. But I, I think that people have to understand that we have a lot to think about besides um, uh, just, you know, tunneling in uh, with certain budget items. And this is a very important, uh, this is a very important aspect 
is to make sure that this town looks as wonderful as it does and continues to improve. So I am definitely going to encourage uh, everybody to say yes with this. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we've had a little blip there. We, yes. Mm -hmm. I declare ordinance 36 2020 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice there a newspaper and follow the ordinance according to the law. And as I mentioned before, ordinances 37 and 38, which uh, were introduced at our last meeting, but uh, did not have the publication uh, time frame in there, we'll have a hearing date on November 9th. And now we are on to our second of uh, invitations for discussion. This is when you may comment on any topic. The same guidelines approved uh, are in place, which um, try to keep your comments to three minutes or less, but we will uh, give you a one minute grace period. If you want to speak, please uh, click on the hand. And when you are recognized, uh, state your name and address uh, as your first things out that you uh, share before you start your comments. Otherwise, you may be disconnected. Anyone wish to comment, please raise your hand now. Okay, seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And we now go on to introduction of ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? Ordinance is scheduled for first reading, have a hearing date set for Monday, November the 9th, 2020, will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up Ordinance 39-2020 for first reading, ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance 39-2020, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $340,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of a trackless skid steer and front end loader. Mayor, I move ordinance 39-2020. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Haley? Yes. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, we now move on to consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Uh, Mayor, I move consent agenda resolutions R258-2020 to R 259-2020, and then R-261-2020 to 272-2020. Second. As noted, I already uh, outlined all those resolutions. Any council discussion or any that need to be pulled? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. All right, there is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Will the clerk please read the voucher totals? The current fund, $5,856,007.10. General capital fund, $168,698.57. Electric operating fund, $677,866.51. For the electric capital fund, $2,350 even. Water Operating Fund, $56,261.40. And for the Trust, $140,961.96. The total is $6,902,145.54. Uh, Mayor, I move approval of the vouchers. Second. Any discussion or any that need to be pulled? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohn? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. All right, there is no uh, new business outside of a reminder for everyone to have a happy and safe Halloween. If you go out trick-or-treating, follow, follow gu guidelines and a reminder that um, if you haven't mailed in your ballots, no matter how they're filled out, please 
do so <laughs> or take advantage of the um, uh, drop box that is behind public safety in the commuter parking lot. And with that. Mayor, I move that we adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, all. Take care. Good night now.